Okay, so where we left off, I had used the pen tool in its most basic way. I'll show you on the edge here to just click and move until I get to the beginning. Remember, very, very important to close your paths. In fact, the reason the default is this is so that you can see when your path is closed by having a stroke. When it's just filled in with black, you can't see when your path is closed, but it's incredibly important for it to be closed. Okay, now with the pen tool, I'm still on the pen tool, the universal kind of drawing tool in Illustrator. If I hold down option, it will change it to the convert, what used to be called the convert point tool, but it's now the anchor point tool. And if I hold down option and I click on one of these anchor points and I click and hold, it will turn it into a curve for me. And then if I hold down command, it will change it into the direct selection tool, which allows me to move the anchor point. And I can delete anchor points and I can add them and I can move them, and I can hold that option and convert them to curves. And you can see how I can turn these really blocky shapes into clouds that I have a lot of control of. But just how different it is than traditional drawing. All right, so how can I change this into something curves? I'm going to use the pen tool again. I'm going to hold down option, and I'm going to click and drag to get curves. But what I just did is I actually created a new anchor point. So annoying. Hmm, Maybe I need to select it first. Select the anchor point. Be so exact with how you, where you click in Illustrator. Hold down Command, I can get the, the Move tool, and you can see how I can turn all of these into curves. If that's what I want. So that's why I always start with straights. And this is one of the hardest things to do with the pen tool is to get a curve going into a corner, then coming out in an opposite curve. If I just start plotting with curves by clicking and dragging as I go, as long as I continue the curve, it makes sense like so. But if I try to change angle like that, it doesn't let me. because a curve will always give you a curve, a straight will always give you a straight. Okay, how can I apply this to my logo? So now when I go to these anchor points, first of all, if I wanna see my sketch underneath and see my lines, I can use that transparency. I can select and then take it down to 50%. So I can see my vector on top of my sketch. Then I can use the pen tool and I can hold down command to move anchor points around. But I have to click on the anchor point first. And then I can use option to change straights into curves. And then where I need to move the anchor point, I can. by holding down command. And sometimes I can just delete anchor points I don't need. And then you all see some handles. With command, I can play with those as well. Hold down option. 
change things to curves. Oh, but I actually don't want a curve. I want this to be a straight, so hold down Option again, and then I just want to move it up to here. And then I can start doing this complicated stuff of this spiral, because I've already got a closed path to work with. It's better to start with something simpler than what I'm showing you. So try it on a simple part of your logo, how you could use the pen tool. I hate it when the pen tool folds on itself like that. So that's when I might have to add an anchor point and then move it out. And I just start it as straights first and then convert it. And it takes practice. But the pen tool is useful because it gives you a very, very exacting approach. Add an anchor point here and then pull this out of the way. So you can see what that shape is starting to do. And it gives you a really good sense of how anchor points work. All right, so let me take that transparency back up. I have to select it all and then take it back up to 100%. And so you can see once you convert to tools, you close that path and delete it, you'll get these really beautiful vector curves that you made from straights. So that's using the pin tool. Next, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna show you my favorite tool, which is the pencil tool. Undoubtedly my favorite vector creation tool in Illustrator. The pencil tool is very different than it is in Photoshop. You will find it under the brush. We don't want the paintbrush tool. We don't want the blob brush tool. We might be using that later. We want the pencil tool. You want to double click on the pencil. This is why I like it, because you can draw your shapes much like you would draw in a raster program, but you can set it to be more accurate to what you put or more smooth. I'm going to keep it right in the middle. And I'm going to use my stylus instead of using a mouse. And now I'm going to start by just clicking and then drawing, just like I normally would. And my hand might wobble a little bit. And instead of doing this whole shape, I'm going to simplify it to this kind of complicated shape. And then just like for using the pen tool, you got to make sure you get close to where you began to close the path. You'll see that circle, then it will close the path for me. Now here's the problem with the pencil tool. It creates a lot more anchor points than the pen tool does. You can see all of those. But what I love about the pen tool in Illustrator is that I'm going to actually give it a stroke so I can see it, is that it's like magic scissors. So as long as I start on the path, just with the same tool, I don't have to hold down any button, and end on the path, I can redraw the areas that got a little off. So I'm starting on the path and ending on the path, and it will correct that, that portion. Starting on the path, ending on the path, it will correct that portion. I can always do Command-Z to push it back. use the large selection tool and just move the whole thing a little bit just with my arrow keys. So I've got that curve like perfect with the pencil tool very quickly. Now this inner spiral where I kind of messed up a little bit. I can get it in section by section. And if I feel like it's 
plotting too many anchor points, I can double click on the pencil tool and set it to be more smooth. That means it will plot fewer anchor points and it will smooth out all of the, the edges a little bit more. So even if my hand's really wobbly, that smooth function can really help. And if you mess up, you can just hit Command Z. Now I can even extend it and continue the shape as long as I start on the path and end on the path. And I might like what I draw a little bit more than my sketch. Right. I can extend it as long as I start on the path and end on the path. It can be a little tricky. What happens if you don't start on the path? Well, then you'll just create a new path. Like I just did. One that is separate. From what was before. Start on the path, end on the path. So having a stroke turned on is a good way. See, if I don't end on the path, it will end up with a new, a new kind of line. Whoops. So Command Z. So though the pencil tool can have its own frustrations, it's a really good way to start. And you can see how much quicker it builds up and gives me shapes that I can use for my logo that are perfectly clean without having to deal with individual basic shapes or deal with all the headaches of cleaning the pen tool, the, uh, the pen tool anchors up. So I love the pencil tool, but I will show you yet another way. Let me save my work. Create a new layer. Notice that I lock all of the layers before. And now I'm going to use the blob brush. Let's really make, make use of our tablets and the pressure sensitivity. So I never use the brush tool, but I do use the blob brush tool and the pencil tool a lot. The paintbrush tool is made for strokes, and I don't like designing with strokes because of the point size limitation. So the blob brush tool is this wonderful thing where if you double click on it, you can set it just like the pencil tool for whether it's accurate or smooth, but you can also set it for size, just like it's a paintbrush in Photoshop, and you can set it to be uh, pressure sensitive generally. I guess I need to, this is a different tablet than what you're using, so let me plug in the tablet you're using, because I haven't installed this tablet yet, or haven't had IP install it. So when you have a supported tablet, you'll see pressure as an option here for the size, and then you can set the variation. So I would do up to 10 points of variation. But this is without, so I set the size for the blob brush. You can see that this is 10 point. Oh, I'm gonna plug this in. And what's different than the pencil tool is that the blob brush gives you a solid path. So this gives you something with inside and outside edges. But why it's called the blob brush is as you add to it, you can kind of paint in your logo. It will keep growing the path. 